the Dan Electro short haul. 335 English pounds. You can't walk past that, can you? Apparently, this is held down by a bit of double-sided tape. So this is hardboard, and this is plywood. This is like the Ikea of guitars, this. So yeah, they definitely went their own way, didn't they? Hello, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Guitaristas. This week, my friends, we're looking at a Dan Electro. Look at that. This is called the Stock 1959. The Stock 1959. And it's an affordable, a very affordable, really, reissue of a 1959 Dan Electro. Short horn, referring to the short horns, I suppose. I've always wanted a Dano. Um, I never, and oh, I have got a, a I've, I've messed it up already. I'll show you this. What I was going to say then was I've always wanted a Dano, but never had one, which would be a lie because this has been hanging in the back studio there ever since I've had the channel. This is called a hodad, and yeah, we'll do something about this another time. But I've always wanted a short horn, and I've never had one, and now I've got one. I picked this up used. Three hundred and thirty-five English pounds. You can't walk past that, can you? Now, these are only, only yeah, I'm going to say only four hundred and. Oh, in the UK, £469. New, brand new. You can get them now in the UK, £469. Or in the USA, $459. So, yeah, it's a proper, affordable, very cool guitar. I think you'll agree. And we all know, well, you should all know, that Jimmy Page is famous for playing one of these. He's famous for a few things, but one of the things he's famous for is playing for a short, playing for, playing, playing for Led Zeppelin with a short horn. And here's a picture of him with this particular 59 model. And we've all seen him on It Might Get Loud on the YouTube playing Cashmere on one of these with an audience of The Edge and Jack White. Yeah, so very cool guitar. Lots of other people have played them from time to time. I was just looking back there and Apparently Sid Barrett played one in the very early days of Pink Floyd. So, yeah, I think it's a cool guitar. I've always wanted one, and now I've got one. £335. Bargain! <laughs> what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at it. A very close look at it. What we're going to do is take it to pieces. It's a weird thing, uh, construction-wise and stuff. So I'm going to try and get, get, get to the bottom of that see what's under here um because this is semi hollow with a center block so yeah a bit weird so we're going to take it apart and then we're going to play it and see what it sounds like and stuff so uh, don't forget timestamps are in the description box if you're in a bit of a hurry if not go and get yourself a drink and some snacks and come back and settle down with me and we'll we'll have a we'll have a little meander through <laughs> uh, the dan electro the stock 59 yeah, let's do it. So a brief history of Dan Electro first. They were founded in 1947, I understand, by Nathan Daniel. Hence the name Dan Electro, I'm guessing. 1947, they started making amps, actually, for the large department stores in the US under the brands that you all recognise, Silvertone and Airline. The amps got into guitars around about 1956. And this particular model, the short horn, was introduced in 1959. Hence this one being called the Stock 1959, I guess, because as far as I can tell, it's a it's an accurate reissue of the original. With all the foibles of of the original, like the 
this is a really weird swivel bridge. It's got a bit of, this is power ferro now, but that would have been rosewood swivel to intonate it. So be interesting to look at that later. But I love, I love this kind of thing because it is, yeah, it's an affordable reissue of something that we'll never be able to afford. Like, you know, like the, the Epiphones, the, the original Epiphones, like the Coronet and the Crestwood and the Wilshire. You know, love those things. It's the right headstock. It's the right guitar. It's affordable. It's great fun. So it doesn't matter if, if it doesn't intonate that room very well, does it? Because it's, it's fun. So, yeah, I love it. Dan Electro, of course, also used to make guitars under the Silvertone brand for the big department stores. And they were made out of the cheapest materials possible to keep the price down. So they made the bodies out of hardboard and plywood. And they, they invented these cheap lipstick pickups, which uh, are probably the subject of a, a complete film of their own. Um, but they, they're different. They were made, I think they were called lipstick pickups because originally the coil, which was a magnet wrapped in wire, was just inserted in, in an old lipstick tube that's what i've heard so and to this day this obviously this is the same it's made out of hardboard i'm not sure what bits hardboard whether it's the side or the that so i'm hoping when we take the guard off we'll we'll be able to see so interesting thing and and i think as a result of the the design the materials it's made out of the difference is it's got a unique sound of its own that's, that's been embraced by Jimmy Page and Sid Barrett and many others. So, cool. I'm looking forward to plugging it in. So, anyway, yeah, body. Hardboard and plywood. It's got a maple neck. Nothing unusual there. Bolt-on neck. And uh, it's got... It would have had a rosewood ball back in the day. This is Pal Ferro. And, um, yeah, we'll look at that weird bridge in a bit. Uh, that's what they call the Coke bottle. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Coke bottle headstock, which is a lovely, lovely thing. Proper, authentic Dan Electro. And uh, now this one here has got, this has actually got Epiphone Deluxe uh, Cluson style tuners on. I think these have been changed. I'm not sure of the year of this. I mean, it's not that old. I tried to decipher the serial number to find out, but I, I got absolutely nowhere, to be honest with you. Um, the specs on this say that it has die-cast tuners, and from all the pictures I've seen, they have the metal buttons, whereas this one, as you can see, has got this style, which, are they called the keystone tuners? I think they are, aren't they? So I think they've definitely been changed. Um, it's got an aluminium nut. It's quite different as well, isn't it? So what we're going to do now first is we'll weigh it. So it is a, you know, semi-hollow with a centre block, this, although it hasn't got F-holes. So I think we know it's going to be very light. So let's see. Six pound, three ounces. 2.8 kilos. So, yeah, if you've got a bad back, this is the guitar for you. We'll look at this bridge, tail bridge, first, because it's sort of a bit wobbly, and I think I'm going to need to just remove it. As far as I can tell, here you go, look. I don't know if you can see that. As far as I can tell, these two screws here are just the height. This holds it on. That was not screwed all the way down, but the strings... The tension on the strings was pulling that up. So I'm going to just loosen this. Bear that in mind and hope it doesn't mess with the action. Bloody hell, <laughs> it's screwed long enough. Okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, what a weird design. Well, okay, look, so you can see it's just got a screw holding this bit of wood on. Um, and the idea is that, that it swivels. I'm not going to move it because the intonation was okay. But the idea is it's quite a tight fit. Oh, I moved it a little bit. Just I wish I hadn't done that now. There you go. Yeah, it does move. Oh, look, I can see where it, the position it was in. <laughs> okay, it's back where it was. Yeah. Oh, actually, look, and it's got a, if you can see this, it's got a slot as well, so you can pull it back. Oh, okay. So it is adjustable back and swivel. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. And this has just got a weird kind of lip on there so that it just kind of balances. Yeah, well, it's hardly surprising they changed that over the years. Okay. Um, neck. Let's have a closer look at the neck. As I've said, it's a medium C profile. Let's have a look at the profile and measurements up on the screen now. Okay, here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements at the 12th fret. It feels nice in the hand for sure. Uh, it's, it's very smooth. Quite a flat finish on that. Obviously a high gloss finish uh, on the guitar body, but neck feels really nice. There's no sharpness to speak on the frets. I can't say whether or not this has been fettled at all in, in the previous owner's hands. It may have, it may have been, but uh, it feels nice now. It's got fairly nice, chunky, medium jumbo frets, I would say. Now, this has got a fairly flat board on it. It's a 14-inch radius board on this so you know that's quite flat um, and it's got a 25 inch scale length so slightly slightly different you know fender at 25 and a half gibson at 24 and three quarter inches so 25 it's kind of in between isn't it so yeah they definitely went their own way didn't they Let's take some pickup readings before we go any further. So master volume, master tone, three-way switch, nothing unusual there. Bridge pickup. So that's 3.93 kilo ohms. And the inductance is just over one Henry. So yeah, this is interesting. And the neck pickups 3.94k. Again, with an inductance of just over a Henry. Middle together 7.81. So that's unusual, isn't it? Because normally, when you combine pickups, it normally halves the reading, doesn't it? That's right, isn't it? Whereas this time it's gone the other way. 7.81. Oh. I don't know what that means, but some of you will. That's that. I can't wait to see what's under here. this point there's no movement at all that's weird 
gewählt. Okay, I had to just go away and do a little bit of research because remove the screws, nothing's happening. It's not moving. So I'm glad I didn't just start tugging at it without looking. So I've just found on the, um, I think it was a Telecaster forum, someone was talking about it. And apparently, apparent, I say apparently, because it might not be right, Apparently, this is held down by a bit of double-sided tape somewhere here, which I've got to gently tug up, tug up, tug up, <laughs> tug up. That's what I'm going to do, tug at it. <laughs> gently tug at it, and um, it should move. Let's see if I can feel it where it is. I might be ruining this guitar, by the way. I'm doing it for you and for all those <laughs> that have got one of these that they don't want to ruin. God, blimey. This is like the Ikea of guitars, this. I'm just going to have a peek and see if I can... Oh uh, yeah, I can see a, a little thing just there, just this side of the pickup. And I'm just going to be gentle <laughs> so I don't snap the pit guard in half. It's probably a trick, like get a heat gun on it or something, but can you hear this? going oh god I say it's got one the other side as well but he has as well it's got one there as well I think you hear this Now, apparently, you can slide it. It's got a lug here, apparently. Shim, it's got no more bloody stickies on it. Right, I'm wiggling it, and apparently you've got to slide it that way. <sighs> Blimey. Oh God, it's got more. <laughs> I wonder if this has been reinforced. It looks like it's got some Velcro now. Oops, oh, my knob fell off. <laughs> got a bit of Velcro there. It's got a bit of Velcro here. Here you go. Hey. In what way does this pull? Jesus. Okay. We made it. It was stuck down. with double-sided tape. Look at that. Going to have to get a bit of light on this and a camera on it and see what we can see. First off, 
let's just look at the electronics. We've got Alpha Pots, 500k. Alpha 500k Pots. We've got a, can't really see what that cap is. I'm not going to undo this wire because it's nice and neat. And there's really not much to see, is there? Obviously, you can see it's got a, a PCB style three way switch. Um, a fairly cheap looking jack socket. But it's, you know, it's neat enough and it's got a little bit of shielding under there. And just so, the, just here are the bits of double sided tape there, 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 which hold that down. Hopefully they'll restick. It's still quite tacky actually, so hopefully they'll just restick. So that's a shot of the side. You can see it's made out of plywood. That's how the sides are made. So this is hardboard and this is plywood. See that? Get around the other side. And I'll try and show you a shot here inside. Look. There's block. Hollow. So I guess you can just about, I suppose the pickups, they fish out from hole there. Let's have a look, yeah. It's hollow there so you can fish the pickups out. Fairly unusual, isn't it? And presumably this side's all hollow under here as well. Uh, I should get one of them. <laughs> I was going to call it a gyno, a gyno cam, so you can you can go inside. Uh, I should get one of them for <laughs> occasions like this, where we're really yeah, it'd be good to have a good old poke around, wouldn't it? Okay. Now, I'm just going to get the cloth to wipe the dust. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that my, my double-sided tape will adhere again. Save me having to get more. Oh, God. Oh, do you know what? The, oh, I'm going to have to line it up perfectly. Oh, blimey. This is going to be annoying. Screw. There you go. <laughs> I'm glad I thought of that. Oh, look, it's stuck. I've forgotten anything. I think so, have I? Okay. Well, fortunately, that's gone back on without any apparent damage. So there you go. Not the easiest guitar to modify. I think we can safely say that. Um, I think the only thing I didn't mention is that these guitars are obviously renowned for this sort of having this tape around the sides as well. And it does, it comes off, you can see actually there already, it's just... Why well, it's come off? I don't think it was put on properly in the first place, actually. <laughs> it's a little bit tight there. Same there. It, it comes off, unfortunately, that stuff. So... Um, Pickups. So I think, yeah, well, we've worked out that you'd, you'd have to pull them out via that hole. Adjustment. I'm guessing what this that's what these are for, isn't it? Um and undoing them as well. Um let's just have a I can't help myself. I was gonna say, oh I'm not gonna try it. Let's just <laughs> let's just see if the pickup moves when we Right. We're looking at that there. 
is it moving? Yeah, is it? Yeah, 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 there you go. That's how you adjust the pickup heights. And I suppose if you loose them right off, they'll drop out, presumably. I'd like to try and... Oh, I suppose if you... Anyway, I'm not going to do that. There you go. Um, I think I've covered everything, haven't I? <laughs> Let's put some strings on it, plug it in and see what it sounds like. See you in a minute. Okay. Here we are. I've put power slinkies on this one today because it's slightly shorter scale and I also want to try a bit of dag gad in a minute. <laughs> you know what I mean, don't you? But first, I'm going to just muck around with some other stuff so you can hear it. In standard tuning, I'm using the Deluxe Reverb 2 again this week because I still haven't got the Princeton back. On the board, I've got a Soul Food. And I've got a small stone phase shifter, which I might use in a bit as well. I'll show you if I tread on those, obviously, with Crocs cam there. So, um, first off, this is what it sounds like unplugged. Nice, bright spank to it. Isn't it? Very bright guitar. Plugged in, sounds like this. Bridge pickup. <laughs> Neck pickup. Bit of throat to it. the thing we have to do now dad gad
can't review a Dan Electro shorthorn without doing cashmere. It's the law. Unfortunately, that does mean, of course, that I'm likely to get a copyright strike for this film, which means, <laughs> in, case you, in case you're interested, which means that all of the ad revenue for this film will probably go to Zeppelin's publishers. So uh, uh, time again to thank all the supporters on the TV subscription channel for supporting this, because uh, without them, well, I wouldn't earn a penny from this. So... Uh, you can't keep making films for nothing. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you all on uh, guitaristas.tv. That's the address. If you haven't checked it out yet, go and have a look there. This is the sort, I'll show you some, some pictures of what that's all about. It's, a ch it's another channel, basically, which runs alongside this with all of the YouTube content on it. Exactly the same as here. It's all in high quality, 4K. You can watch it anywhere in the world, including on your television. And, of course, there's no adverts there. And there's loads of extras, loads of bonus content on there that you won't find on YouTube. So if you want to support the channel and help me keep making videos like this, please check that out. It costs $50 a year, but you get 30 days free to give it a trial first. So check it out. Come and join my inner sanctum of guitaristas on the TV channel and help keep this whole thing going and free of sponsorship. That's, that's the key as well, you know. I don't want to take sponsorship to do these films on YouTube because I want to carry on doing stuff that we like, like this. The Dan Electro Shorthorn, or Stock 59, to give it his proper name. What a fabulous guitar, eh? Uh, I thought it sounded great. Very distinctive. It's definitely got a, a sound all, all of its own, I suppose. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head that it really sounds like. It's definitely not. You know, it's def different, isn't it? Different flavour. And obviously that there was, you know, dad-gad tuning. If you don't know what that is, D-A-D, G-A-D, which means that the low E was tuned down to D. A-D, they're the same. G is the same. The B is tuned down to A. And the E is tuned down to D. And that gives you that, well, you can play an open A on it. I don't know what that would be called there, but uh, it's, um, well, it's cashmere, obviously. A, a guitar like this, I think, I'm going to keep this, by the way. I really like this guitar. And it's because it's such a, a lightweight, fun, cheap guitar, I definitely would have this kicking around at home all the time, you know, by the bed, ready to grab. Knock it, doesn't matter, does it, really? Knock it about and look better if you do. I don't know if you could break it. <laughs> Can you imagine what would happen if you did try? But we're not going to do that on this channel. Um, yeah, knock it about a little. Don't knock it about. Respect your guitars. What am I talking about? What I'm saying is it's, it's kind of, it's cheap enough to just have there and just lean it against the wall and not have to, you know, Mummy it, mother it, cuddle, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's a fun little thing. And I mean, I don't normally muck around with uh, alternative tunings. Obviously, I learned that because this guitar's famous for that. But I think I would be inspired to do, to muck around with some different tunings. Open tunings, I think it'd make a great slide guitar. The action on this, well, it's fine, actually. <laughs> Yeah, you know, in spite of the primitive setup here, the intonation was fine, good enough. You know, I mean, I'm not sure that if you're a jazz player that up above the 12th fret, you know, it might not be the one for you. <laughs> Get a PRS instead. This is, this is a great little rock guitar. It does the job fine. Very flat radius fingerboard um, I was doing a little bit of noodling I haven't cut the playing in yet but I was doing a fair amount of <laughs> too many notes stuff you know and I wasn't having any issues so cool you know as I say the action is all right but you know great little slide guitar great great guitar to inspire you to do something different 
uh, you know, yeah, pick it up and just go, well, what, what does the guitar want me to do? Rather than uh, have that ongoing struggle that well, I certainly have, trying to work out what I'm going to play. So I, I'm a fan. I love it. I like the colour. I like the look. I like the cool factor. I like the headstock. And not above all else, but certainly up there with all the other things. I love the price. Used, I paid £335 for this. New, you can pick one up for 450 I don't know why it's taken me so long to get one. I've looked at them loads of times and thought, oh, I should get one of them. Uh, obviously, this one found me. You know, it was, it was on the rack in my local music emporium. So I thought, I love that. Uh, and I'm jolly pleased. I <laughs> I'm jolly pleased I saw it. So there you go. That's this week. Thanks for putting up with me again. Come back, same time, same place next week, and find out what on earth we're up to then. I'll look forward to it. See you then, I hope. Ta-da.